My grandma started taking creatine, and her only regret is not starting it sooner. I'm going to show you the new research that convinced her to start taking creatine. And no, it's not about muscle performance as you might expect. Then I'll address creatine safety, because there are two important safety concerns, and then we'll go through whether you should consider taking it too. So, what was the new research that was powerful enough to convince my grandma to start taking creatine? Well, many people focus only on creatine's muscle performance effects, but there's more to the story. While 95% of the body's creatine is stored in muscles, the remaining 5% is found in the brain, kidneys, and liver. It's the creatine in the brain that particularly intrigued my grandma. Our brains need a lot of energy to function properly. Creatine, which we get from foods such as red meat and seafood, helps produce this energy quickly, supporting crucial brain processes like memory and thinking. Research shows that taking creatine supplements can increase the amount of creatine in the brain. Multiple studies have investigated whether boosting brain creatine can improve memory and cognitive performance. But it's not all smooth sailing when analyzing this research. Some studies found that creatine helps memory, especially old adults and vegetarians, while other studies, they showed no effect. But here's where things get particularly interesting. There's good evidence showing that certain challenges, such as a lack of sleep or aging, can decrease brain creatine levels. So while the different results between the studies might be due to factors like varying dosages and duration of creatine supplements, it's also possible that the mixed results are because some people have lower levels of creatine in their brains than others. And to cut through these conflicting results, scientists conducted a large review of all of the studies called a meta-analysis to determine if creatine really helps with memory. 10 studies were included in the systematic review. Memory was evaluated using different assessment tools, and the main analysis showed that yes, creatine supplementation improved memory performance compared to a placebo, with the effect being particularly strong in older adults. When I told my grandma about this study, she was very intrigued and wanted to start taking creatine. But before doing that, and explaining the best form and dose of creatine to use, we have to go through the potential side effects and ensure it's safe. My grandma is in her late 80s after all. There are two famous safety concerns. The first is whether creatine damages the kidneys. Creatine is converted into creatinine, and testing blood levels of creatinine is one way to measure kidney function. So if a person starts taking creatine, their blood creatinine levels will go up, making their kidney function appear worse than what it actually is. But taken from the International Society of Sports Nutrition, we have multiple long-term high-dose studies of creatine showing that it does not affect kidney function. Instead, think of your kidneys as a traffic officer. Creatine is converted into creatinine like we've gone through earlier, which is like having extra cars on the road. When you check the road, the extra cars make it look like there's a traffic jam and the officer isn't doing their job well, but the officer is still managing the traffic just fine. The caveat to this is for my patients that I see with severe kidney disease who need dialysis. So for those select patients, no, I would not suggest creatine. But outside of those patients, the evidence suggests that creatine does not affect kidney function. The second famous concern is hair loss. The concern came from a 2009 study of rugby players, where creatine supplements appeared to increase levels of a hormone called DHT, and DHT contributes to hair loss. But it's important to note that it was just DHT. No study has ever shown that creatine accelerates hair loss. There was also some statistical trickery in that 2009 study. There was a small increase in DHT levels in the creatine group, but in the placebo group, there was a small decrease in DHT. So combined, that explains the statistically significant result. Now, those results from that 2009 study have never been replicated. There have been five other studies that looked at hormone levels, including DHT, and there were no increases seen. In summary, the current body of evidence does not indicate that creatine supplementation increases total testosterone, DHT, or causes hair loss. So I want to put those concerns to rest. There's no evidence that creatine causes hair loss. Instead, what's likely happening is that when people are starting to take creatine, they're also starting to work out, and testosterone levels go up when we work out, so it's far more likely that creatine supplements are getting blamed for hair loss when it's actually because of the resistance exercise that people are doing. 
There's a couple of other safety concerns to address, and then we'll have a look at the best form and dose of creatine. Now, there used to be a concern that creatine supplements increase uric acid levels, and high uric acid can cause painful gout attacks in the joints. But creatine actually appears to do the opposite and decreases uric acid levels. And the final concerns are dehydration and muscle cramping. But from the current evidence that we have at the moment, there's no link between creatine supplements and those side effects. Instead, the only consistently reported side effect from creatine supplementation is weight gain. And that makes sense because we're improving lean muscle mass. It does not increase fat mass. So after going through these risks, my grandma was more than happy to start creatine. But what dose and form is best? And should you consider taking creatine? Well, the most studied form of creatine is creatine monohydrate. It's cheap, well absorbed, and that's the form I take and the form I recommended to my grandma. We both take 5 grams a day. There used to be an idea that people who were starting creatine should have a loading dose of about 20 grams for a few weeks. This would rapidly saturate their muscles and offer a faster rate of improvement. But by doing that, you increase the chance of tummy upset, and most people now stick to the 5 gram a day dose because that will saturate the muscles just over a longer time horizon, and it does have a less chance of tummy upset. So should you consider taking creatine? Because most people watching my videos aren't in their late 80s like my grandma, and the evidence for improved cognition for younger adults is weak. For muscle performance, however, the evidence is so strong that the International Society of Sports Nutrition previously concluded its position stand on creatine supplements that they're the most effective nutritional supplement currently available to athletes in terms of increasing high-intensity exercise capacity and lean body mass. The evidence also suggests that creatine supplementation may help reduce muscle damage and enhance recovery from intense exercise. Overall, there's great evidence for improved muscle performance and recovery, as well as emerging evidence of improved memory and cognition. So let me know in the comments if you've decided to take creatine monohydrate 5 grams like I do, and remember that no supplement is a replacement for a healthy lifestyle, so make sure to check out this next video here that explains the latest research on how to have a refreshing night's sleep, and a massive thank you to all of the patrons who are supporting the channel.